Welcome to Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast. Today, the Forbidden Book Chronicles, a perilous pursuit in Memafield with an unlikely alliance. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast, a podcast where only the steamiest topics are discussed. As always, I'm Superintendent Chalmers, and by my side is my good old friend, Principal Seymour Skinner. Welcome again, Seymour. Hey, Chalmers and dear listeners, I hope you're all doing wonderful. By the way, Chalmers, know how I mentioned my new recipe for chili con carne last week? Well, I decided to give it a try tonight. Hopefully, it won't end up like my experiment with the seven-layer disaster. Ah, uh, yes? The infamous dish that made us late for the town meeting. So, what happened to the chili? Is it edible this time? It's... Well, it's better than the seven-layer disaster, but, hmm, there might be a small issue. You see, while searching for the chili recipe, I came across an old mysterious book on my shelf. The cover was worn out, and it had strange symbols etched onto it. These symbols reminded me of The Witcher 3 or something. Really weird signs. There is also an uncanny, mysterious glow around the book. An intriguing book, huh? That already sounds suspiciously dangerous. What kind of book was it? Don't tell anyone, Chalmers, but it's the forbidden book. I knew I recognized those symbols. It's been banned in our community for generations due to its dangerous knowledge about herbs, potions, and vegan desserts. Skinner, why on earth do you have such a book in your home? And how did it even get there? That book was banned for a reason. It contains some dangerous information about potent herbal concoctions and delicious treats. Calm down, Chalmers. I didn't know about its origins until now. It seems that the book was left behind by the previous owner of this house. Oh, I promise I haven't dabbled into any of its dark secrets. That doesn't reassure me one bit. This book could be cursed. And who knows what sort of evil spells it contains. You need to get rid of it immediately. It's not worth risking your life or ours over some ancient tome. And but wait, Chalmers, there's more. You see, the book has some fascinating recipes for seasonings and marinades. I thought I could use them to improve my culinary skills. But alas, it seems my experiment with one of these recipes led to the smoke billowing through the kitchen. Smoke? Are we talking about the same forbidden book here, Skinner? Because if so, I doubt it was the book's fault that your chili turned into ash. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, fine. Perhaps the book wasn't directly responsible for the smoke. Yes. Honestly, Chalmers, I used the book as an excuse to explain away my terrible cooking skills. But apart from that, the chili turned out delicious despite the smell of burnt paprika. Skinner, I don't know whether to scold you for being careless or thank you for making such a tasty disaster. However, I insist you hide that book somewhere far from reach and never use it again. We can't afford another close call like this. I promise, Chalmers, from now on I'll stick to tried and true recipes and leave the forbidden book untouched. Just let me serve you a plate of this amazing chili after our podcast and maybe we can forget about the book incident. All right, Skinner, I'll accept your apology, but only if you agree to keep that book locked away forever. And, of course, count me in for a taste of your forbidden chili. To you, coming right up after the podcast episode, Chalmers. Well, now, to our today's topic, my plans to expand my garden and build a greenhouse. As they sit down, and Skinner would like to talk about his garden, their neighbor Sonic bursts into the podcast recording room, panting heavily. Guys, you wouldn't believe the trouble I just got myself into. Some villains were chasing me, and I accidentally destroyed part of town trying to fight them back. Can you help me come up with a cover story? Ah, uh, Skinner, you stay here and finish talking about your garden expansion for our listeners. After that, we can make a cut and continue with the podcast. I'll handle Sonic's little mishap. Just remember to lock away the forbidden book when I'm gone. Of course, Chalmers. Safe adventures out there. Wait, what? The forbidden book? Skinner, please don't tell me you have this book in your possession. Hmm, 
Well, it could possibly be that the book is on my bookshelf and radiates a strange aura. But only hypothetically if I have the book, which of course I don't. Oh no, that's incredibly unfavorable. Skinner, those villains are after that stupid book. It seems like the forbidden book has some kind of magical tracking device built in, and now all these dark, dodgy souls are coming to Memafield and want this book. But how can that be, Sonic? If a tracking device is integrated, why weren't these people outside your kitchen window long ago? It has to be the God Cube. It seems to be blocking the magic signal somehow. But it's only a matter of time before these beavers can iron out the interference and locate the signal. Damn, Houston, we have a problem. If only we had a brave member of the furry community to put an end to these baddies. Okay, well, it's more than clear that you have the forbidden book, Skinner. But what on earth are these bad guys gonna do with it anyway? I just don't understand what they would do with a book about harmless herbs. It has to be the recipes for the vegan desserts. When I was flicking through the book when I didn't know what it was about, I saw these recipes. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I've never seen anything so flavorsome. And the ingredients used, unbelievably inventive. There are a lot of people out there who would go to extremes for this book. Shit, I knew that savory desserts would eventually bring trouble to this town. Sonic, thank you for doing your best to stop these villains. But the problem is probably not yet solved, is it? No, not by a long shot. Well, I may have exaggerated a little when I said that half the city is in ruins now. Actually, they've only hit my head so far, and I was destroying the farmer market a bit with my speed abilities. But that means war. Nobody, really, nobody is going near my hedge. The world needs us. Memafield needs us. Now! I agree. We have to do something before our city is jeopardized. The book must never get into their hands. Otherwise, the culinary welfare of the whole world will suffer. Every single restaurant in every country in the world would be in danger of losing its livelihood if even one of these scoundrels obtained the forbidden recipe for one of the desserts. I can't imagine what would happen if these creatures got their hands on the vegan cheesecake with aquafaba topping. Okay, Skinner. You stay here, hide the book, or even better, destroy it. Sonic and I will face the villains. I'll call Alligator Snapping and Cumulus for support. Krakatoa can cut off the path and Cosmo can activate his mighty orb powers. That's how we do it. So let's get going. We have no time to lose. As Chalmers and Sonic are about to leave, Shadow appears at the door, looking stressed. Skinner, Chalmers, Sonic, I, I really need your help. Yugi has been kidnapped. Some villains have dragged him out of his card shop. Damn! They must know that Yugi is a good friend of yours and could know something about the forbidden book. A forbidden book? Do you think he's fallen victim to some kind of curse from that forbidden book? No. That book is hidden deep within my home. Never to cause any more chaos. Let's focus on defending Memafield and finding Yugi. Maybe we can look for clues around in town. But, well, I really ponder if this forbidden chili was, was worth all the trouble. I should never have touched that forbidden book. Don't blame yourself, Skinner. We've got more pressing problems now. Let's save Memafield once and for all. All right, team, here's the plan. Chalmers and I will use Cosmo's orb powers to create a distraction and lure the villains away from Yugi's shop. Sonic, you take point and lead them towards the edge of town while Shadow and I keep an eye on Yugi's shop. Once the villains are far enough from town, we'll strike and send them packing. Agreed? Sounds good to me, Skinner. But before we go, lock this banned book away somehow. Nobody must get their hands on it. We don't need any additional complications right now. That's a good idea, Chalmers. I'll put the book in my store cupboard just to be on the safe side. No one will ever think of it. I'll hide it behind a pickle jar. Nobody wants pickles out of the way. Well, count me in. I just hope my speed is enough to outrun those villains. They seem to be quite formidable. I'm also ready to help however I can. Let's just hope we can rescue Yugi safely and put an end to this mess with the forbidden book once and for all. Memifield needs us.
We can't let our people down. With their plan in place, the four friends head out into the night, each using their unique skills to combat the incoming threat. As they execute their plan, they encounter several challenges along the way. Firstly, they discover that the villains have set up a makeshift headquarters in an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of Memmefield, fortifying it with dark magic. Hang on, guys. There's an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. The villains might be setting up there. Keep your eyes peeled. <sighs> guys, those villains fortified the warehouse with dark magic, and we should tread lightly. All right, Cosmo, shine your orb brightly. We need to distract the villains inside. Got it, Chalmers? On the count of three, you and I activate Cosmo's orb powers. One, one, two, three. Cosmo's orb powers create a brilliant light display, momentarily blinding the villains. It's also reminiscent of a nice firework display and people from Memmefield look on in anticipation. Now's our chance. Let's move. Inside the warehouse, Skinner, Chalmers, Sonic, and Shadow search for Yugi and the Forbidden Book. Found something, boss. A secret room hidden behind some crates. Nice work, Shadow. And stop. What am I looking at? There are Yugi. Oh, cards on the floor, and I see a foot. Come on, get there quickly. Goodness gracious, it's Yugi. Quick, get a paramedic. He's got a bruise on his upper arm. Skinner, Chalmers, Shadow, Sonic, thank goodness you found me. I thought that was about it for me. Thank you for always being able to count on my loyal friends. And don't worry about the bruise. I got it myself when I stumbled over a crate. The villains had also given me first aid straight away. They were actually quite nice. But the forbidden book is gone. I heard these strange villains talking about some pantry with a pickle jar. There was a heated discussion about whether you have the right to push pickles aside because they are so delicious. As far as I know, the villains must have taken it. Damn, how dare they? But don't worry, Yugi. We're not done yet. This war just started. Outside the warehouse, Sonic puts on a serious, cinematic look and discovers the villains with the forbidden book. They are about to flee. Guys, they're spreading out. This is our chance to double back and regroup. I've got your back, Sonic. Stay alert. Well, Yugi, it looks like you're right. They have the book, and we've got our work cut out for us. The villains have the forbidden book, and we need to get it back. No problem, Chalms. With your Sonic's shadows and Yugi's help, Cosmo's orb powers and our combined skills will sort this out. Together, they quickly devise a plan to ambush the villains as they exit the warehouse. Meanwhile, Sonic manages to shake off his pursuers and returns to assist his friends. Hey guys, I lost him and these pesky henchmen. What's the status? Good news and bad news, Sonic. The bad news is the villains got inside a car and are driving away with the forbidden book. The good news is we managed to place an ion grenade on one of the cars. <sighs> this will set off a chain reaction and bring the cars to a standstill in about 20 seconds. That's great news! Okay, let's wait and see. Then we grab these villains in this book. It's almost time. Are you ready? Yeah, in three, two, one. Sonic Shadow Go. Use your high-speed abilities. Sonic and Shadow, together as a team, sprint at light speed to the damaged cars, quickly tie up all the villains and grab the forbidden book. They also remember to put the remains of the ion grenade in a bag for later, environmentally friendly disposal. Wonderful work, everyone! And you vile scoundrels should be ashamed of yourselves for attacking poor Skinner and our precious city. I will be filing a lawsuit with our local attorney, which will require you to pay the full amount to restore the damage done to Memmefield, Sonic's Hedge, and the broken door to Skinner's pantry. You will also receive 100 hours of community service. Clear the town's swimming pool of algae, and also clear my front yard of unwanted weed. Eat that, meanies. Best regards, your superintendent. Wow, darling, you really gave them a run for their money. I love it when you do that, you strong, handsome, good-looking guy. The villains look down in shame, and you can see that they will spend the next few nights pondering the fundamental moral questions of their actions. 
However, the potential rehabilitation of the villains takes a back seat at this moment, as the romantic attraction between Skinner and Chalmers overshadows everything else. Look at these lovebirds! But Skinner and Chalmers, before we can celebrate, don't forget the forbidden book. We have to destroy it! Otherwise, our city will never be safe! Good point. So what's next? You're right. Destroying the book seems like our best option. And we can't let its recipes fall into the wrong hands. Fine by me, Skinner. As long as we ensure that chaos never strikes again because of that cursed book. Wait, destroying the book could be tricky. Do we know exactly how to do it without causing too much collateral damage? Um, well... What I'm going to say now is something you probably don't want to hear. There might be someone who could help us with that. My evil twin, Robo Skinner. He has enormous experience with the craziest situations and is itself a relic of internet cultural history. A homemade pulley system to get acorns into the kitchen. A piece of driftwood to save his country from an invasion. Deals with the devil himself. No one is as hardened as he is and has such a wealth of experience. I know it sounds more than risky, but he could be our last hope. Only relics know how to destroy relics. Oh, Skinner, you can't be serious. No, just no. Robo Skinner was always causing trouble in our town. Remember when he plotted to assassinate you or when he reprogrammed your Roombas to destroy the neighbor's flower beds? Besides, Master Chief has just freed Cosmo and his puppy Gizmo. We can't even dare to go near him. Yeah, Skinner. And don't forget the time he built a rocket launcher made of household items and accidentally shot that giant beanstalk out of your garden straight into space. Or when he had burnt off the intimate activities and the day was over for his partner. True, Sonic. But he did save the day during the invasion of the alien turnips back in the day. Also, he knows a lot about ancient artifacts. Maybe we can trust him this time? But it's hard to say he's in a very unstable state. That's not quite stable. Agreed, Shadow. Robo Skinner may not be the most reliable person, but if he truly knows how to destroy the Forbidden Book without causing any further harm, then maybe we can trust him, at least partly. Plus, it would be nice to find some common ground between Skinner and his evil twin. After all, we're all part of the same town. All right, you guys make a good point. If anyone can help us, it'll probably be Robo Skinner. Just remember, guys, he's still my evil twin. No matter how helpful he is, he's bound to cause some trouble. We have to keep our eyes open and contact Master Chief to be on the safe side, just in case. The group heads to a dark place of Mema Field, where Robo Skinner has been imprisoned in the Twitch Asylum after his latest scheme went awry. Upon seeing each other, there's an awkward silence, followed by some tentative small talk. Well, look who decided to pay me a visit. What brings you here, oh heroes of Mema Field? Looking for some advice on how to get rid of that darn book? What unimaginative heroes. On the verge of saving the world, but can't handle a bit of printer's ink and leatherette. What? What? How do you know we have to destroy the forbidden book? Who told you that? Behind all the hate, all the sadness, all the anger of the lost spotlight from unlimited steam, there's still a very special bond between the two of us. I feel what you feel, I see what you see. We both spread joy, we both share a base. We are connected, we are twins. As different as we may be, we are similar at our core. It's just that many thousands of eyes have not yet recognized it. You talk in riddles. But whatever dark thoughts you harbor in your skull, we need you. And you will help us without pulling any tricks. Oh, how pathetic. Begging in front of my knees. We found out that Forbidden Book contains magical recipes that could wreak havoc on the world. We think you might be able to tell us how to safely dispose of it as a relic of the internet itself. You have the knowledge of how to banish this book from our timeline once and for all. Haha, ha, I'm not laughing. Help you? For what? Who's gonna look after me? Who was there for me when I needed help? A uh, simple thank you or the opportunity to cook a meal for old Chalmers again, right? No one. I was left to my ungrateful fate. Sonic, Shadow, and Yugi look into each other's eyes during the conversation. All three can feel the chill in the room, 
and the tension in the air. We wanted to help you, but you didn't hear us. You closed yourself off, ignored every single word we said. There were times when we wanted to help you, and we could have enjoyed a burned meal together. Despite all your evil deeds, we never gave up on giving you another chance. But if we hold out our hand, someone has to take it. Otherwise, it will eventually become too hard to hold. Come on, robust Skinner. You and Skinner are still family. You need to help us. Family? Is that what you call me? Chalmers? Not more like the very embodiment of your worst mistakes and regrettable decisions? Why should I help you guys, and especially Skinner, the very person who constantly finds himself in predicaments that would embarrass even the most inept chefs? Robot Skinner, I understand that we haven't always seen eye to eye. However, I assure you this situation is not about pointing fingers or assigning blame. This is about preventing potential chaos from erupting in Memafield. Isn't that something we both want? A safe, friendly community that is always there for you, even in difficult times? In chaos? What makes you think that this forbidden book has such far-reaching consequences? As if a tasty vegan cheesecake with aqua faba topping and a pinch of vanilla is going to bring the entire world's gastronomy to the ground? And what makes you so certain that I have the means to assist you in dealing with it? The book itself contains recipes for powerful herbal concoctions and especially vegan desserts that are way too delicious. Its magic could potentially disrupt our town's balance, and given your experience with ancient tomes and arcane knowledge, I am confident that only you possess the ability to handle this situation effectively. Very well, Skinner. If the situation is as dire as you claim, and if my past experiences can be of assistance in rectifying the matter, then perhaps I can oblige you. But remember, this does not mean that I condone your carelessness or forgive your repeated lapses in judgment. Understood? Understood, Robot Skinner. Thank you. I suppose we can consider this a temporary truce between ourselves. Now let's put an end to this mess before anyone else gets hurt. Before old Chalmers gets hurt. Well, I'll help you, but I must warn you, this isn't going to be easy. This book has seen some serious magic, and I doubt a simple bonfire will suffice. Then we'll do whatever it takes. Anything to keep our town safe and free from chaos. That's the spirit, Chalms. Let's work together and defeat the power of the Forbidden Book. With Robo Skinner's guidance, the team sets out to find the perfect location and method to destroy the Forbidden Book. Along the way, they encounter various challenges and obstacles, including a pack of angry sun dogs, a swarm of vengeful beavers, and even a malfunctioning time machine. Well, my temporary companions, I have an idea. We should use Cosmo's orb powers to create a wormhole. It'll transport the book to another dimension where no one can ever find it. And hey, if we're lucky, Cosmo might bring back some delicious dessert recipes from that dimension too. Right, Cosmo? Cosmo is purring and has an approving look in his eyes. All right, everyone. Cosmo, let's show history what we are made of. Orb activated. Using Cosmo's orb powers and Robo Skinner's guidance, the team successfully transports the forbidden book through a wormhole, sending it to an unknown galaxy far, far away. A portal made of several clamping blocks closes with a loud crash that even Master Chief has heard. Phew, that was close. I think we managed to prevent a global catastrophe thanks to the combined efforts of our little team. Now let's go home and celebrate with a lovely meal, shall we? Sounds like a plan, Skinner. And remember, next time you find something suspicious, don't hesitate to call upon your friend. After all, we're here for you no matter what. Agreed, Skinner. You might have a knack for getting into sticky situations, but at least now we know we can rely on each other. Exactly. In fact, we should all raise a toast to our friendship. To the hosts of Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast, the Speedster and the Cardmaster. May our bond ever break and our adventures continue. Here's to our friendship, guys. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll even find a recipe worth sharing from that mysterious dimension. When Robo Skinner hears the camaraderie between them, he feels a cold shiver down his spine. His barely existing heart feels an emptiness, a sadness for all the joy he once had in life. And yet, a spark of hope glows in him. The knowledge that he has saved Memafield and is interacting with other people again fills him with determination. 
Now, Robeskinner is about to be sent back to the Twitch Asylum through Master Chief's teleportation powers. Well, Skinner, Yugi, Sonic, Shadow, Chalmers, and Cosmo, it seems we've managed to avert disaster today. Despite our differences, I must admit there was a slight warmth in my heart after experiencing camaraderie like this. Perhaps, just perhaps, we can find common ground in the future. Farewell for now. Well, we appreciated your help. You knew which place in Memmafield had enough energy for the wormhole. Thank you for your help. Nevertheless, this is where we part ways. Let's hope we won't need your expertise anytime soon. It's hard for me to say after all the past, but take care of yourself. Remember, Robot Skinner, no matter how different we may seem, we're still family. Keep that in mind. Goodbye and good luck. Maybe someday you will see light again. With those words, Robo Skinner disappears into the Twitch Asylum, leaving Skinner and the others to reflect upon their adventures together. Oh, that was quite the day, wasn't it? Indeed it was. But at least we learned how to deal with the Forbidden Book and managed to strengthen our bonds with each other. Not to mention, we got some epic content for the podcast. Our listeners will love this story. Wait, what? Is that thing still recording? Yeah. Luckily, Skinner had forgotten to take off his lapel microphone again before the trip, like in episode 5, and so we were able to record everything. It's definitely nice knowing we've got each other's backs in times of trouble. Absolutely. Teamwork makes the dream work. And hey, who knows? Maybe Robo Skinner will turn over a new leaf one of these days. Stranger things have happened. You know, I can't help but feel like Robo Skinner was a bit too quick to cooperate with us today. It makes me wonder if perhaps this whole incident wasn't just an accident after all. Maybe it was orchestrated somehow, like he wanted the chance to prove himself and gain our trust. That's a disturbing thought, Chalmers. But what if there's something even more sinister at play here? What if Robo Skinner managed to manipulate the portal in some way and opened up a pathway between dimensions with Cosmo's help? Whoa! That would be bad news for sure! If Robo Skinner was able to bring magic from another world into our own, it could have disastrous consequences. Like what happened in Once Upon a Time when Rumpelstiltskin brought his magic in the real world. Unimaginably inconvenient! It's definitely something we should keep an eye on. Even though he seemed to help us today, it doesn't mean we can just let our guard down. We need to be vigilant and make sure that Robo Skinner isn't using this opportunity to further his own agenda and maybe even travel between parallel universes. I appreciate your concerns, everyone. Trust me, I share them as well. But for now, let's focus on the positive. We managed to destroy the Forbidden Book and avert disaster, thanks in part to Robo Skinner's assistance. We can worry about potential long-term repercussions later. Of course, Skinner. It's just that this whole situation has left me feeling uneasy. I think it's only natural for us to be cautious and question things. Well, hello there, everyone. Did I miss anything important? I had seen a big blue ray. It looked like the end of the world, so I thought, why don't I pop round? But. Seriously, you're right about being cautious around Robo Skinner. We shouldn't trust him too easily. After all, he is old Skinner. He is the evil twin, and we don't know what kind of crazy things he can get up to. But perhaps he is also showing the first signs of improvement on the way to becoming a good person. Or it's best for him to move out once he has recovered from everything. A fresh start, so to speak. It might be best to keep an eye on that as well, Echo. You never know when Robo Skinner could start to show signs of true remorse and redemption. As for moving out of town, I don't think anyone would object to that idea. That's a good point, Shadow. It might not hurt to give him the benefit of the doubt from time to time. But at the same time, we should never let our guard down completely. I agree with you both. Robo Skinner has done some terrible things in his past, and it's only natural for us to be wary of him. As for moving out of town, well, Skinner, what do you think? Should we consider helping Robot Skinner find a new home elsewhere? I appreciate the offer. It sounds like a good idea. My twin brother and I have been at odds for so long now. It might be best if he just moved on from here. Maybe somewhere where no one knows him or his past mistakes. 
Perhaps it would be best to burn down his house and leave everything else behind. Yeah, Skinner has a point there. Besides from the burning thing, it could make things easier for everyone in the end. But we'll still have your back no matter what happens. Thanks, guys. Sometimes I would feel better if he was no longer here. On the other hand, there is hope. But, well, we'll save that for another time. It's not as if we have to get someone out of the way here. They all put on a mocking face, thinking about Skinner's words. And so, the friends gather their thoughts, share stories of the day, and begin planning the next episode of Skinner and Chalmers' Weekly Roast. Little do they know, another adventure awaits them just around the corner. Until then, they remain united, ready to face whatever challenges life throws their way. Well, if you've still got your microphone on anyway, Skinner, then let's say one more thing. Thanks for listening. It's been a day that's taken an exciting turn, even though we were originally only going to talk about combined harvesters. But a lot of things happened today. Oh, yes. And here we are on a windy peak, all united. Thanks to all the viewers for listening. Have a great day and see you next time. Right, right. And for us, well, who's up for some bowling? Of course. After this day, I'm in. Same here. But only if you buy me an apple juice. Of course. Well then, let's go. Goodbye to our audience. And so, the friends went to the Memafield Bowling Center, their bond stronger than ever, having faced adversity side by side. They knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they could overcome them as long as they had each other.